irrational idea of taking the motorway straight through a completely undisturbed and extraordinarily special bit of chalk downland. Each bureaucratic ineptitude, political expediency, you name it, it was there. Barbara had campaigned against the motorway for years. Heritage and the landscape backcloth of Winchester, which is, after all, England's ancient capital. We have come up with a way that obviates the need for the public purse to find the cost. That it's not just the M3, it's a whole range of road schemes, and that if the European Commission doesn't take... But her campaign had little effect. Frustrated with all the usual forms of protest, she eventually found herself chained to a fence alongside Friends of the Earth. We were quite sort of deep green radicals and they, it took a while for us to realise that we had a common interest and a common culture and we cared about the same things. Of course, all the people of Winchester had jobs to go to. Uh, they, wouldn't, they couldn't spend the time uh, needed to actually prevent the road from being built. Was what happened very quickly was a group of scruffy hippies um, from the universities of England suddenly turned up. They were the ones with the time, they were the ones with the passion, and they could actually be there every day as was needed. I was at a Hawkwin gig in Brixton, an all-nighter, and uh, I started chatting to the chap dancing next to me, and, and he said, oh, I've just come back from this place just outside Winchester. They're trying to put a road through it. There's some people living there. Sounded instantly like somewhere I needed to go. We've got graduates, we've got people still at university. I've left university a year ago. We've got craftspeople, we've got musicians, we've got artists. We've got a lot of very, very spiritual people here. And I'd be in this dry lecture, and then I'd dash out of the lecture, grab my rucksack, hitchhike down to Twyford Down, and arrive at the camp, and something would have happened that morning. If my house was burning down, I wouldn't write a letter and lobby my, lobby my government. I'd want to bloody do something about it. Jason Torrance was a member of a direct action group called Earth First. What they proposed was a permanent camp pitched directly in the line of the motorway. The camp's residents became known as the Dongas, after the Iron Age tracks that ran across the down. Well, how do you live like this? How do you really live like this and survive? Because we're actually cold and wet and this isn't a joke and we haven't actually got homes to go to anymore. This is it. A lot of people got very ill from you know, very poor hygiene. We would just be hunched around this little burner pitifully, you know, this huge flapping tent, you know, that goes in one corner. I bloody hated the whole camp thing. I hated being in a tent. I hated being cold. My remaining memory is being constantly cold and wet and damp. Nature of the, the, the British psyche, really. Just indicates the anger that people express over what is being proposed. The devastation of this countryside is unacceptable. The first time I took direct action, some people said, right, there's some bulldozers, they're working right here, right now, come on everyone, you know, chop chop. And I just grabbed a tambourine and a drum or something and uh, ran down the hill with all the others and thought, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, and ran onto this work site. And just saw these incredibly brave people running out in front of these dumper trucks with wheels that were taller than me. And I just thought, I can't do this. So I kind of stood at the side drumming for a little while. But the next day, walked out in front of a bulldozer looked at the driver who just gave me a big smile and that was it. Stopped his uh, and turned off the engine, that was that. Another demonstrator had used a bicycle lock around his neck and fixed himself to the axle. Now it's unfortunate this kind of radical action has to be taken but I feel it's really necessary to save sites of special scientific interest. I'd just done an interview uh, on Sky News. Uh, everyone was moved away out of the system, they turned the, turned the machinery on. Turn it on! And just one word entered my head at that time, which was... The onlookers became enraged when the crane suddenly burst into life, with the demonstrator still shackled under the vehicle. They feared for his life. At that moment, it, you know, it really became apparent to me that you know, I was prepared to die for this cause. 
some of the actions taken by the protesters were pretty extreme. I do remember one particular protester holding a very young child standing in front of this extremely large bulldozer. And it was an extremely dangerous thing to do. I just couldn't contemplate how he would do it. And that was really why the extreme actions had to be taken in terms of security measures on site to actually progress the work. After nine months of disruption, the government had had enough. They decided to take action themselves. It was about five, six in the morning. I was woken up suddenly by a guy saying, quick, 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 get out of bed now. There's a hundred guys in yellow jackets crawling all over the dongas. I think they're here to do some surveying. <laughs> It became known as Yellow Wednesday because they were all wearing yellow jackets. And these guys were just all over the place and they were circling the machines to bring in the machines. It was like the Romans are coming. It really was the Romans are coming. Oh my God, this is it, this is it. And then it all just went completely pear-shaped. It was just everyone doing their utmost to defend that land, you know, through passive resistance, through throwing ourselves in front of the machines, from climbing on top of the diggers, to lying in down in front of the security guards, anything we could think of, um, to try and slow down the pace of work. We were outnumbered like three to one, four to one, I don't know. Plus they were like three times our size, most of them, and, um, and, and it got very, very rough, very, very quickly. The security guards were almost going out of their way to hurt us as much as possible. They would grab you by your hair, I had long hair at the time, grab you by clumps of hair and just drag you over flints, through hawthorn, through brambles, you know, throw you onto metal, that kind of thing, just deliberate violence. The media savvy dongas quickly alerted the press and by lunchtime, Yellow Wednesday was news. 50 private security guards and around 30 members of the so-called Dongas tribe fought over land. I can't believe I'm in England. I mean, if you showed pictures like this from Romania or Russia, um, you say, all terrible and you get head up. But those are John Major's bully boys. That's the only thing we can say. But the following May, they returned to the down to protest again. By this time, the site looked completely different. The cutting for the motorway had been excavated, leaving white chalk exposed. Rebecca and Jason were soon arrested and ended up in court. One by one, we all stood up and made our statements. I don't think it made that much impression on the judge, and uh, he, uh, he said, you have been quick to snatch the martyr's crown. I think you'll find it uncomfortable headgear, and promptly sent us all to prison for 28 days. Um, I was staggered. I was absolutely staggered. All we did was dance on Twyford Down and take part in a peaceful demonstration and we were sent to prison. I'd try and go there as little as possible. I'd certainly never drive through it, just on principle. I remember taking a, a train journey uh, once with, um, with Rebecca and it, it was almost like the first time we'd seen it and we couldn't really bear to look at it. It was a scar in the landscape and, and in us.